uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, in this video we are going to talk about the karyophyllenes and uh, we will be talking about the second important uh, class of the karyophyllenes uh, in the last video uh, i've told you that these karyophyllenes they are a group of proteins which are involved in transporting the molecules between the cytoplasm and the nucleus of a eukaryotic cells and i've told you that the karyophyllenes they are broadly divided into two classes one they are known as the m proteins which are responsible for transferring the proteins from the cytoplasm into the nucleus of the cell and we discussed that in detail uh, the second class of the karyophyllenes that we'll be focusing on in this video that is known as the x proteins which actually uh, help moving the proteins from the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell if i give you an uh, a recap of the uh, previous video that how the proteins they are transferred from the uh, cytoplasm into the nucleus of the cell i've told you that the uh, m protein alpha it binds to the m protein beta and the uh, cargo or the target protein now in the target protein there is a specific sequence which is known as the nls binding site so the m protein alpha have got an nls binding site it also have got a binding site for the uh, m protein beta now when this trimeric complex forms the m protein beta the m protein alpha and the cargo this m protein beta have got specialized heat repeats and in the nuclear pores there are fg sequences so the m protein beta utilizes it heat repeat to bind to the nuclear pores and when it bind to the nuclear pore this whole complex of the m protein beta m protein alpha and the cargo uh, that actually moves into the nucleus of the cell now in the nucleus the rain gtp it goes and it interacts with the m protein beta therefore the m protein beta is removed from this particular complex now to remove the cargo from the m protein alpha the uh, in the m protein alpha there is an auto regulatory region which mimics the structure of the uh, nls of the cargo so the auto regulatory region after the removal of the m protein beta it gets exposed and when it gets exposed it goes and it binds to the uh, nls binding site of the m protein alpha and hence the uh, cargo protein that is released into the nucleus of the cell uh, uh, this was actually the rain cycle uh, and in the rain cycle what happens is that when the uh, rain gtp it moves into the cytoplasm uh, there it is converted into the rain gdp and this rain gdp is again transported into the nucleus by utilizing a uh, specialized uh, receptor which is known as the ntf2 and when this rain gdp it moves into the nucleus here the rain gef again convert it into the rain gtp for another round of the transport now uh, in this particular video first i want to focus on the uh, cargo or the transport of the uh, protein from the cytoplasm into the nucleus of the cell by the m protein beta now if you remember i've told you that the m protein beta it is alone enough to transfer the cargo protein from the uh, cytoplasm into the nucleus of the cell because it have got the heat repeats so if this is say for example your cargo protein in the cytoplasm this cargo protein is bound by the m protein beta so there will be uh, an nls binding site in the m protein beta as well so the m protein beta will be binding to this cargo protein when it binds to the cargo protein you will be getting a complex of the m protein beta and the cargo protein so this is in contrast to the m protein alpha where a trimeric of the trimeric complex of m protein alpha m protein beta and the cargo that is made now in this particular uh, you are actually having a dimeric structure in which you have got the m protein beta and the cargo now the m protein beta will utilize it heat repeats that we discussed in detail in the first part of this video so it will utilize it heat repeats to interact with the fg sequences of the uh, nuclear protein complex or the nuclear pore complex not the nuclear protein complex it is the nuclear pore complex so the m protein beta that will utilize it heat repeats to bind to the fg sequences of the nuclear pore complex and hence the complex of the m protein beta and the uh, cargo protein that will be transported into the uh, nucleus of the cell now what happens is just like the uh, 
And just like we discussed in the previous video that when inside the nucleus this m protein beta it actually interacts with the rind gtp and when it interacts with the rind gtp it loses its affinity for the cargo protein and hence the cargo protein that is released into the uh, nucleus of the cell now you will be having a complex of the uh, m protein beta and the uh, rind gtp now this uh, m protein beta and the rind gtp complex it is again going to move into the cytoplasm of the cell by the same mechanism the m protein beta will be utilizing it uh, heat repeat to interact with the fg sequences of the nuclear pore complex so the uh, complex of the uh, m protein beta and the rind gtp that will move into the nucleus uh, into the cytoplasm of the cell now in the cytoplasm as i've told you there is a gap protein and that will convert the rain gtp into the uh, rain gdp and when it is converted into the uh, rain gdp this rain gdp will be transported back into the uh, nucleus of the cell so that to prevent the depletion of the rain inside the nucleus and inside the nucleus the rain gdp GDP will be again converted into the RAND GTP by the RAND GEF and the M protein beta that will be now free in the uh, cytoplasm of the cell so it will be available for another transport of the cargo into the uh, nucleus of the cell. Now the second class of the uh, karyophyrins they are known as the X proteins and the function of the X protein that is opposite to the function of the M proteins. So the X proteins, they are a class of the karyophyrins, which binds to a carboprotein into the nucleus of the cell and transport it to the nuclear pore complex to the cytoplasm. So the function is totally opposite of the uh, M protein, which was transferring the protein from the cytoplasm into the nucleus of the cell. And the X protein, they are actually transferring the protein from the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, which kind of the protein they have to be transported from the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell? Now, the proteins which needs to be transferred from the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell, they have got a specific recognition sequence which is known as the nuclear export signal. And as the name indicate, uh, this particular nuclear, uh, this particular signal that is actually required for export from the nucleus. Therefore, it is known as the nuclear export signal. Now, when you uh, look at the uh, uh, amino acid sequence of this NES, this NES is a short amino acid sequence of four hydrophobic amino acid residues. Now you may be wondering that I have uh, written nine names over here. So all of these, the, all of these amino acids, they are actually hydrophobic in nature. The glycine, the alanine, valine, the leucine, isoleucine, proline, phenyl, alanine, methylene, and tryptophan. All of these, they are actually the hydrophobic amino acids. So you can actually uh, utilize uh, these uh, hydrophobic amino acids to make uh, a short sequence of the four hydrophobic amino acid residues. Uh, but in most cases, you will be utilizing the uh, leucine and the uh, isoleucine. But you can actually use any of these hydrophobic amino acids to make this short amino acid sequence of four hydrophobic residues. Now, this NES sequence that is actually present in those particular protein which needs to be transported from the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell. Now this nuclear export signal that is actually uh, utilized by these exporting proteins to export the proteins from the cell nucleus to the cytoplasm through the uh, nuclear pore complex uh, utilizing the uh, nuclear transport. As I've told you, it has the opposite effect of nuclear localization signal uh, in proteins where there is a nuclear localization signal. That means that it will be transported from the cytoplasm into the nucleus of the cell. Now, in proteins where there is a nuclear export signal, it, this means that those particular protein will be uh, moved from the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell. Now the uh, NES, the nuclear export signal that is actually recognized and bound by the X protein proteins which are present in the uh, nucleus of the cell. Now if you uh, uh, look at the in silico analysis of the known nuclear export signal that have been um, analyzed, it has found the most common spacing of the hydrophobic amino acid residues to be. Uh, this is actually the uh, sequence, the uh, known sequences of the NES. 
uh, you will be having an L followed by 3x, another L followed by 2x, another L, and then another x, and then you have got an L. Now this L is actually a hydrophobic residues or this X can be any other amino acid. So if, if I uh, consider this uh, L as the leucine, so you will be having a leucine over here, followed by three other amino acids. Then you will be having another leucine, followed by another two amino acids. They can be any amino acid. Then you have got another le uh, leucine, followed by another any amino acid, and then you'll be having the leucine. So this is actually the known sequences of the nuclear export signal and this is actually the sequence that is recognized by the X protein for the transport of these proteins from the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, uh, the spacing of these hydrophobic residues, the spacing that we just discussed, a hydrophobic amino acid followed by three spacing, hydrophobic amino acid followed by two spacing and so on. Now this spacing of hydrophobic residues that may be explained by examination of the known structures that contain in NES is the critical residues for the binding by the X protein that usually lie in the same phase of the adjacent secondary structure within a protein which allow them to interact with the X protein. So simply you can see that this is actually the known sequences of the nuclear export signal which are actually recognized and bound by the X protein proteins. Now how this uh, nuclear export works? Now the first step in the nuclear export that actually begins with the binding of the RAN GTP to the X protein protein. So this is the first step. The RAN GTP as I've told you that is present in the nucleus. The X protein that is present in the nucleus. So the RAN GTP that is going to bind to the X protein protein. Now the binding of the X protein by the RAN GTP that actually causes a shape change in the X protein and this uh, change shape that actually increases its affinity for the export cargo. So initially the X protein protein, it cannot bind to its cargo protein, but once the X protein has been bound by the RAN GTP, it causes a shape change, and that shape change is actually increasing the affinity of the X protein for the cargo protein, thereby it binds to it. Now, once the cargo is bound, you'll be having a trimeric complex again. You'll be having the RAN GTP, the X protein and the cargo complex. So these are the uh, trimeric complex. This trimeric complex will move out of the nucleus through the nuclear pore. Now, again, the uh, transfer that will be the same that we just discussed for the uh, M proteins. The uh, X protein proteins, they have got the uh, nuclear export signal and when they have got the, uh, uh, these X protein have got the heat repeats, not the nuclear export signal. The X protein, uh, they have got the uh, heat repeats and when they have got the heat repeats, that means that can interact with the FG sequences of the uh, nuclear pore and when they can interact with the nuclear pore, they can actually move this cargo from the uh, nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell. Now once in the cytoplasm, the GAPs, they are going to hydrolyze the RAN GTP into the RAN GDP. Uh, that we discussed in detail that the GAP they are actually responsible for converting the RAN GTP into the RAN GDP and because of this uh, in the cytoplasm you find a lot of the RAN GDP. Now when the GAP it hydrolyzes the RAN GTP to the RAN GDP this causes a shape, uh, causes a shape change and subsequent X protein release. As I've told you that the X proteins, when they are binded with the uh, RAN GTP, they can actually interact with the cargo protein. Now in the cytoplasm, as the RAN GTP has been converted into the RAN GTP, because, uh, because of this, the uh, RAN GDP uh, and the X protein, the X protein actually loses its affinity for the uh, cargo protein, and hence the cargo that is released into the uh, cytoplasm of the cell. Now once no longer bound to the RAIN, the X protein molecule that loses affinity for the nuclear, uh, nuclear cargo as well and the complex fall apart. Now the X protein, again, that is going to move into the uh, nucleus of the cell utilizing its own heat repeats. 
the RAND GDP that will be transported back into the nucleus by utilizing the NTF2 receptor that we discussed in the uh, M protein video. So the X protein again that will be in the nucleus, the RAND GDP that will move again into the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, the RAND GDP will be converted into the RAND GTP by the GEF protein. So again, we have got the X protein and the RAND GTP available in the nucleus for another round of transfer of cargo from the uh, nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell. So if I summarize this, if this is the cytoplasm, this is the nucleus of the cell, so you have got the cargo having a nuclear export signal, you have got the X protein, you have got the RAND GTP. So the RAND GTP, when it binds to the X protein proteins, the affinity of the X protein increases for the cargo and it binds to the uh, NES of the cargo protein. Now this trimeric complex, it moves from the uh, nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell, utilizing the heat repeats of the X protein, which interacts with the FG sequences now when the uh, when it comes this trimeric complex come to the cytoplasm in the cytoplasm the RAN GAP is going to convert the RAN GTP into the RAN GDP and when it happens the X protein actually loses its affinity for the cargo and the cargo that is released into the uh, cytoplasm of the cell the RAN GDP will interact with the NTF2 and it will be transported back into the nucleus where it will be converted again into the RAN GTP by the GEF and the X protein will utilize it heat repeats to come back into the uh, nucleus. Now, one of the uh, interesting thing is that when you talk about the ribonucleic acids, uh, now they are composed of nucleotides and th thus lack the nuclear export signal to move out of the nucleus. But we know that the RNA, they do move from the cytoplasm into the nucleus of the cell. Now, what happens is that most form of the RNA that will bind to a protein molecule and when they bind to a protein molecule, they will be making this ribonucleoprotein complexes and these ribonucleoprotein complexes, they are actually exported from the nucleus because in this ribonucleoprotein complex, the X protein that will be interacting with this protein part and when they interact with this protein part, they will be indirectly moving the uh, RNA from the uh, nucleus into the uh, cytoplasm of the cell. So this is all about the karyophyllines. So if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and share it with your friends.